and Prof. Fauzan has also introduced to us about uh, Dr. Chimot's story um, furthermore, but I want to introduce, uh, I want to add a little bit more further. So uh, Dr. Abdul, uh, Abdul Munim has been an Islamic school principal for 31 years, promoting Islamic education in seven different Islamic schools throughout the United States of America. So he obtained his BA from the University of South Florida, Tampa, Florida, and completed his master's in the education of specialist degrees from Terman University, uh, Terman State University in Cassaville, Missouri, and earned his doctorate degree in education administration from Wall State University in Muniz, Indiana. He is also the first international student to attain his education special from Ter Terman State University. And after his retirement in 2017, Dr. Abdul Monim has traveled extensively by promoting the power of compassion and forgiveness in Islam. So with his um, presence here, we would like to first open our first session of our regional summer camp. And now let's welcome Dr. Abdul Monim to give a small talk on Western versus Islamic concept of education. I will pass the floor to Dr. Monim. Hello, doctor. I think the connections over there is not good, uh, so maybe. Yes, I think we we can wait for him for a while. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi Um something not quite right with uh, uh, my camera i think but yeah. you can hear me right yeah yes we can hear you too, you doctor. can push it a little bit up uh, dr jim huh the camera go a little bit up it's not allowed. yes 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 oh you can see me yes now yeah i cannot even see myself <laughs> <laughs> i'm sitting right next to uh, in the farm of yeah. thailand but no, 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 as long no, no, as you no, see no, no. my uh, my face, handsome face, and I can see your beautiful, handsome face from Malaysia and all over Southeast Asia, I'm thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Doctor, I'm sorry. Happy. Could you please adjust your camera a little bit up so that we can see your face, Doctor? Okay. You let me know. Okay. Okay. Stop, stop, stop. So, okay, so, uh, I hope, so, I hope, <laughs> uh, you give okay. me that, okay, stop, stop, okay, all right. It is good? Yes, good, doctor, good. now it's perfect. Alhamdulillah, because, alhamdulillah, you are a perfect Muslim, mashallah. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala rasulillahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amma ba'du. Rabbi shrah li sadri. Bayasir li amri. Wahlul uqdatan min lisani. Yafkahu kawli. Rabbi zidni ilma. I want to start off... Um, with thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, for allowing me to be part of the triple IT. Regional camp, summer camp, June 5th to 2021. I thank Dr. Jameen and the and Professor Fawzan Nuruddin Muhammad and all Triple IT uh, Islamic work in Southeast Asia and Pacific. Alhamdulillah. Um, Recording in progress. All right, inshallah. Um, my topic today to share with you is uh, Allahumma salli ala muhammad. Let me see. Can I share with you the the our point presentation? Can, can. Yes, please. Huh? Yes, please. Okay. okay. I don't know where it go now. Allah, Sunday, Allah, Muhammad. 
it disappear. But you can hear me, right? You can yes. send a copy to Shazwan. I really want uh, the audience to see the PowerPoint as well, but I don't know where to locate it. You, if you can email to me or share with Brother Shazwan or email to me, I can share with the audience. Can you see it? No. I you cannot see, right? You you sharing just now. Professor Fawzan, do you? No. Uh, alhamdulillah. So what should I do next? Uh, to to send presentation to you the PowerPoint. Okay. Direct me. Okay, please you share to me uh, your, my email or my WhatsApp. Okay, barakallah fi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. 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 Allahumma salli ala Muhammadin Nabiyin Ummihi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam taslima ala da qalqi wa rida nafsi wa zina ta'arshi wa mida ala kalimati Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Allahumma salli ala Muhammad Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim Ya Rabbi, Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah illazim Subhanallah wa bihamdi Subhanallah illazim Dr. Munim, you send to email or you share with my WhatsApp? I think uh, like we did before mm -hmm. How do you do that from your side? Um I think you can share uh, the the screen. Can you share the screen now? Allah. Uh, or you, you can. Uh, Did you see? No. I already I already clicked um, my PowerPoint, but it. No, no, you do not share the screen. You click the zoom under share screen uh, below it, in the middle. I, I, I think you need to let me in again. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can come. Uh, Allah Allah. 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 Yes? No, uh, you still there? Are you are you okay there? Yes, but uh, we don't. Uh, you do not share the screen yet. Okay, share a screen. Share the screen at the below, green color. Yeah, yeah, yes. Share the screen. You you used to click the button share screen just now. Yeah, but yes, I did. Screen. Yeah, now share the screen under underneath. Yes. Uh, not chat. Hmm. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. Uh, below it, three. you see the button share screen? Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah, 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 that's good, that's good, that's good. Yeah, okay. Can, yeah, 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 alhamdulillah. That's good. Okay. Okay, good. So, uh, go first slide, yes, thank you. Okay. Yeah, you can present now. That's it. Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Very first slide now. Yeah, alhan wa sahlan bi. Alhamdulillah, my topic today to share with our beautiful audience uh, of Islamic work, Islamic education is uh, revolutionizing Islamic education in 21st century through Islamization, Islamic education, American experience is uh, a theoretical aspect of is Islamic education. 
Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So let me see if I can adjust the... Okay. So there is a, I cannot make it animation, huh? Uh, not sure. Uh, you can uh, start... Uh, uh... Present because full screen. Full screen. If I can have animation, full screen. Uh, full screen below. Add the below. Uh, yeah. Uh, no. 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 Don't go to the. Prof, you can press F five also to present. I uh, know. I think you you are in the different. You have to go to the file. Revelation. You. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. You show five. Uh, yeah. Yes. It's okay. Fine, it's fine. Ah, alhamdulillah bi khair. Tunduk yeah. lima. Yeah. <laughs> Allahu akbar. Allah tests our patience. <laughs> All right. What does it mean to revo revolutionize Islamic education in America? First, uh, we need to understand the definition of revolutionizing Islamic education. Uh, we go to the dictionary. Marian Webster dictionary to re to revolutionize, which is, is the word, verb, is to change something fundamentally and completely. And you see that by putting this terminology into education, it really does change completely and fundamentally. By completing, by implementing the concept of Islamization. Islamization is a, a term that you cannot find in a dictionary. MashaAllah, a triple IT actually who have so many publications in the United States about Islamization of knowledge. So it comes from Islam and civilization. Anything that we do, we do, anything we do have to do with Islam, especially in Islamic education. So by implementing the concept of Islamization into the education, the Islamic theory has revolutionized the whole practice of Islamic education in America. Now I want to share with you the, my personal contribution toward Islamic works in America. On the, on the, on the screen, there's a uh, Sisna, which is um, the organization that dealing with Islamic school in North America and also Islamic society of North America. This is the mother umbrella of the, the largest Muslim organization, Islamic organization in North America. In 1980s, uh, Isna, Islamic society of North America and Islamic school established officially established and in Islamic school because of the very new, very hard to uh, change and to find the, the way to Islamize the subject thought. So become two department, secular subject and Islamic subject. Secular subject like you teach math and science, social study, language, art, English, and Malay, for instance, and so uh, social science, uh, computer science, and all is secular subject. Then come to Islamic subject, Islamic study, Al-Quran, local Arabia, uh, I consider it as Islamic subject. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, uh, appoint me to be the first principal for the first time in my career of Islamic school. And meanwhile, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give me assistance to my righteous wife, uh, who's uh, accept Islam at the time. And her name is uh, Dr. Linda Jimila Kulokotonis. Rahimallahu alayha. She returned to the mercy of Allah uh, eight years ago. She's, she held PhD very intelligent, very smart, who helped me, number one, Islamization theory began to internalize and formulate. 
and then two Islamization start to implement. And inshallah, as we move on, I'm very proud of the, my presentation and my work in America because it's related to Malaysia. Okay, let me go back just a little bit. In 1989, Allah blessed me to help form Sisna. You, you see the Sisna, C I S N A, Council of Islamic School in North America, which is uh, take care of every aspect of education in North America, including accreditation. And Alhamdulillah, 90, 2017, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor me, uh, allow me to retire uh, due to, alhamdulillah, the death of our uh, our dearest son, Salahuddin, rahimallahu alayhi. And Allah gave me assignment to promote the beauty of Islam through compassionate, wa ma arsalnaka illa rahmatan lil alameen, and uh, of course the forgiveness. Wallahu ghafoorul rahim. So, alhamdulillah. I visit Malaysia with the mercy of Allah and the, uh, facilitated by the Triple IT and of course, Professor, my dearest friends and brothers, my Professor, uh, Muhammad Nuruddin, uh, Fauzan, who invite me a couple of times, subhanAllah. This is how the, my brief history of Islamic education. Now we're going to go into Islamization. In the world today, we can put the slave of Allah into camps, into camps in the area of education. Secularization, which is nothing to do with Islam. Okay, nothing to do with Islam or anti religion. And in the other camp is Alhamdulillah, I don't want to say that our camp or um, their camp, but for the sake of conversation, this is the camp that I have been promoting in the United States and I have been living in the United States for uh, 50 years. So we talk about Islamization. Now let's understand the secularism or secularization. So we understand this is sharp contrast between Tawheed or Shirik. Islam, uh, what is the secularism or secularization? Is this entire religion? Is the process of converting or transforming someone or something from religious value to secularism? Or secularization is when someone or something change from being closely connected to religion to being non-religious. In the United States, the government or society divide or separate the church and state, not like Alhamdulillah in Malaysia. So this is why Islamization becomes so crucial for the Islamic movement in North America, because we have we are living in not yet Islamic society, but we have to bring Islam into practice 24 uh, seven because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala need to be worshiped wherever we go. Now, what is the Islamization? Islam plus a civilization. The definition that we can share with you is the transformation, uh, listen carefully, subhanAllah, how the contrast between the two. Islamization is the transformation of closely connecting someone, something to Allah and bringing it under the influence and fundamental value of Islam, exemplified by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashahadu an la ilaha illallah. anna Muhammad rasulullah. Islamization, alhamdulillah. In order to get into Islamization, we have very important factors from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
that why the Dr. Jamila and I, we start to do research. When we entered Islamic school for the first time in Washington, uh, in Seattle, Washington, he said, uh, Jamila, this is not normal school. Islamic school is a school of Allah. We cannot follow the public school curriculum. No, you can because this is the Islamic school, that means you have to come out with Islamic curriculum. Then we start research. The best and top most important is Al-Quran. Then Hadith of Rasulullah says, and Sirah of Rasulullah First, we have to start what Allah means in order to connect with education and teaching our children in North America. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Al-Imran, Inna dina inda Allah islam Surely the way of life with Allah is Islam. Nothing else. He said, oh, Jamila, that means we have to think something when we teach the children in, uh, in the classroom. Then Allah further said in the same, uh, same surah, ayah 85, wa mayyab so serious. And whosoever seek the way of life, a deen, a deen other than Islam, it will not be accepted from him. And we he will not be, he will be a loser in Yaman Qiyamah in the hereafter. Subhanallah, I say that, Yimila, that means we have to do something quick to make sure that our children be being taught according to the Islamic principle. Then this pretty much decide that Islamic curriculum must be Islamized. A'udhu billahi sameen alim min ash-shaytanir rajim Rasulullah sallam was sitting on the on his camel on the day of Arafah he's giving uh, kutbatul wada hajjatul wada Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals this portion of the ayah in suratul ma'ida Ayah number three said, Al-yawma kmantu lakum deenakum wa tmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa raditu lakumul islam madina. Something complete, something perfect, and something that had been chosen by Allah for all humanity. Subhanallah. This day I have perfect your religion for you, way of life, and complete my favor upon you, all mankind, and have chosen to all mankind, for all mankind, Islam as your way of life. Then, what does this transfer or inspire in terms of education? We cannot use anything else in education but have to be taught with Islamic connection. And then that's what definition of Islamic education came from these three ayat that I share with you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow mercy and may my presentation today be Dr. Jamila Sadaqatul Jariya as well. Amen. Islam is a complete, Islam is a perfect and complete and chosen way of life revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the benefit of humanity, of mankind. Now, in order to, to go into the Islamic school, into the classroom, we have to come up with the definition of what we should be teaching our children. It's a trust and amana from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and also a trust and respect by the parents of these children. Therefore, Islamic education is a process by which transformation of connecting someone or something to Allah. 
Rabitu billahi rabba. We are very well pleased with Allah as our Lord. Remember this dua. This dua we recite after every adhan and bring him which is still or its activity. It means activity or curriculum under the influence and fundamental value of Islam. Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islam dina. Exemplify by Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now do I complete according to the completion of this ayah. Muazin adhan. La ilaha illallah. When we come, when we hear the Adhan complete, that we say, "Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh." Then we say, "Raditu billahi rabba wa bil Islam dina." وَبِ مُحَمَّدٍ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ نَبِيَّوْ وَرَسُولًا So, say, Jumillah, Alhamdulillah. This is the, the message from Allah and He gave us Hidayah. To establish the concept and the practice of Islamic education in the United States. Now, get into the Islamizing Islamic education. Islamic education, because of the secularism, secular subject being involved in our Islamic school, and we said this can be done. Yeah, we, we teach science, we have to mention about, we have to Islamize it. If we teach math, we have is, Islamize. Tam, how could we do? Let's go back to Rasulullah when he uh, being appointed by Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. By be a Khotaman Nabiyin, and the last prophet of Allah. That's why we say we have to follow the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallam, Uswatul Hasana. Let's look at the um, the life of Rasulullah Sallam in his twenty three years. Thirteen years. What did he do to the Sahaba? He built the Iman in the life of Sahaba for thirteen years. Then. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala order him and Sahaba to move to Medina, and for ten years, what did he do? He established amal. So with this Makkah, Medina, Makkah and Medina period, let's come to see how we can uh, reformulate into the Islamic education. At that time, we look into. Manhattan, New York City, and we found World Trade Center. It worked for our ideal Islamic education model. Before 9/11, one tower Islamic aspect of Islamic education, uh, and the other tower uh, represent academic aspect of Islamic uh, education. Okay. Subhanallah, what? my 11 came by the permission of Allah. Muslim didn't do it. I was in a school that morning. We were teaching the student. The news came flashing that the World Trade Center being hit by the planes. Subhanallah. Then the model of Islamic education was World Trade Center no longer available. Subhanallah. Dr. Jamila, I told her we need to look elsewhere to keep our Islamization or academic Islamic study, Islamic education in parallel 50-50. Because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to live in dunya, aim for akhirah. Rabbana atina fit dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina adabana. Then the success in dunya follow Islam. The best to reach Akhirah with success through Islam. 
Allah Subhanahu wa taala kai as tuluk at the Kuala Lumpur we found this perfect twin tower we call Pitonas twin tower have you ever seen this Dr. South Fausan, have you seen these twin towers? <laughs> Alhamdulillah, I, I really thankful to the uh, the previous uh, Prime Minister Mahathir. I think during his time, these Petronas tower <coughs> being uh, formulated and built. Correct. So what happened now with Islamic education model? So one tower is academic, the other tower. Is Islamic. The much more perfect for Pitanas to be used an ideal model of Islamic education in America at the time. This is the bridge. So the question is, what is the bridge for in Islamic education? Since Islamic education no secular subject, so what can we do? So we start put this on the TV, on the computer screen, and start to look back at the time of Rasulullah Sallallahu in Medina, in Mecca, 13 years, and in Medina, 10 years. Because nothing happened by accident. Everything that happened in Quran, every word, every ayat, every ayah, is by design by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. When he sent Rasulullah Sallallahu every movement, by the side of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why whoever Rasulullah Sallam said in Hajjatul Wada, any of you who adhere to two things, you will not go astray. Kitabullah wa sunnati. Follow the Quran and my sunnah, you will be on the straight path to Jannah. So Alhamdulillah, on 13 years, look at the bridge. Islamization process. One tower is academic, and the other tower is Islamic. Thirteen years, Rosh Islam spent 50, 54 years, 54% uh, of his time, and 10 years is 36%. So when we are together, it's not 100%. It's work magic, because Allah make plan. Uh -huh. These towers mean early childhood have to tarbiyah, nurturing our youth, our babies until they grow up and start teaching academically, ta'lim, Islamiyah. Now, 8% is on this wonderful bridge that link tarbiyah, tarbiyah towers with the ta'lim tower, become tarbiyah, Ta'lim Islamiyah, become Islamic education, and you have Islamization uh, to make mm -hmm. sure that every subject we teach have to link with Islam. And the next slide, you will see what do you mean by link with Islam. When you add all these three numbers together, 100%. 46 plus 46 plus 8. 100%. Alhamdulillah. Now, come to Islamization itself. The def uh, in definition, Islamization is a transformation closely connecting someone or something to Allah and bring it under the influence and fundamental value of Islam. Now, in Islamic education, Islamization can be defined as the transfer, transformational process of closely connecting all educational activities to Allah and bringing them under the influence of fundamental value of Islam. And of course, exemplified by Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. All activity in Islamic education can be Islamized by using Al-Quran, a hadith or sunnah of Rasulullah Wasallam as a primary source. Therefore, Islamization is to connect 
everything and everyone, everyone and everything with Allah, with Islam, and with Rasulullah Sallam. So I told my teachers, this is a formula that you don't have to uh, have trouble with because it means air. Because air is everywhere. A Allah, Radhitu Billahi Rabba. I, Islam, Wa Bil Islam Idina. A Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi wa Sallallahu wa Rasula. Then when you play, prepare a lesson plan, make sure that even you teach science, you have to do research. Make sure you got it to Al-Quran because you have to refer to the word of Allah and which whatever, anything related to Islam and Rasulullah Islam. So that's why this is considered Islamization. One of the most important elements in Islamization process is uh, we have to Islamize environment, al manahu Islamia. I, I tell them that this uh, uh, sponge, uh, sponge very explain what the sponge and our our child have some similarity. One of the most important element in Islamic education is to is the learning environment. Subhanallah, even start at home, how the mother nurture her baby and how the father inter interact with the baby and with the mother and how the home become islamai so we must islamai learning environment al manaku islami for our children to the islamization process at home at the school and the masjid become three uh, institutions that work together to raise one child each child is like a sponge he absorbs that which is his environment. A child is like fish in the water, either clean or polluted. Islamization process help purify the learning environment for the children. A positive role model for the teachers, for the mother, for the father, for the principal, for the imam and the community member very crucial in Islamization process or creating positive environment for our children. Now, let's get back to the school. How could we Islamize uh, Islamic school, Islamize curriculum? We uh, Islamize every subject we teach, art, reading, language art, computer physical education even quran remember islamization is every subject but that will be this is a we talk about theory then we have a second part is a practical application of islamization process after quran we islamize is arabic language Islamic study, social study, mathematics, science, everything have to Islamize. Refer to Allah, refer to Islam, refer to Rasulullah, Sayyid Salam, air. Alhamdulillah. Then the next one is personnel. We have to Islamize person, personnel also. Very crucial, especially as in the United States in multicultural society, which is pretty much like um, Malaysia or Thailand. We have to pick personnel very carefully in order to implement Islamization process in our school. At home, husband have to be so careful in pick up the righteous wife for his son and daughter. The same thing, mother to be, she had to make sure that her husband or the father to be for her child have to be very good Muslim. That's why we have the beautiful dua from Quran. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa zurriyatina kurata ayun wa ja'anna lil muttaqina imama. 
That's why you have to have a righteous spouse in order to have a, a happy home, fit dunya. Inshallah, will be happy akhirah for the whole family. Office personnel have to be practicing Muslim, assistant principal, the principal, school board. And I'm talking about American experience here. All right, inshallah. I'm sure that um, similar to, uh, to Malaysia and Thailand. Uh, Sometimes you cannot find principal, but you have to be very thorough in bringing the not yet Muslim to involve in Islamic school. The parents, the reason I have question mark, because we have to open this door for the not yet Muslim to enter Islamic school. Because Islamic education belongs to every child. Alhamdulillah, I have so many, many experience in the said that uh, the not yet Muslim children come to Islam school and Alhamdulillah, later on, they became Muslim and the whole family became Muslim. The teachers, very important to have teachers that understand and practice Islam and even kitchen personnel, bus driver, librarian or janitor. So this is talk about human, uh, the human component of Islamic, Islamic school and ideal Islamic education. I put our dearest son Salahuddin when he was in kindergarten on this slide. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor him as a shaheed, uh, alhamdulillah, and being with Allah in chandelier of of the arsh of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this moment until Yom al Qiyamah and that we reunite with him and his beloved mother, Dr. Jamila Linda Kolokotonis Amin. An idea of Islamic education, the quality of Islamic education of a child, a youth lahadin, so gentle, subhanallah, such and so, depend on the quality of three important Islamic institutions which work together through Islamization. That means the home of Salahuddin have to be Islamized. How we interact with him, how I interact with his mother in front of him, for instance. We have to make sure that we'll nurture him into the positive way of growing up in not yet Muslim society as America. After home, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who created home, when he created Adam alayhi salam and Hawa. That's why home is so important in the concept of Islamic education. When the child is well raised from home, when he comes to school, subhanAllah, teacher has to have a very easy time teaching. In general state, in public school in particular, it chaos. Bullying. Teacher have hard time teaching. Sometimes we have the uh, not yet Muslim uh, came to teach at our school. No one want to leave because they said Mudir. They call me Mudir uh, Jidmur. Now I can teach, and then Subhan they stay for a long time. Don't want to leave, and many of them accept Islam as well. So this is why Islamic education belong to the everyone whether muslim or non-muslim and we islamize the teacher have to islamize uh, curriculum lesson plan classroom and the whole school have to make sure that the five sense of learning of each child will be absorbed to all the environment that they are, uh, he is in then of course the community center of called the masjid Make sure that our children enter the masjid. Subhanallah, have been two years now because of COVID 19 uh, situation start to be so difficult for Muslim Ummah. But Alhamdulillah, um, I'm in Thailand now. My local masjid opened five times a day. So Alhamdulillah, uh, I want to make sure that I myself in the masjid because when I raise them or we raise them in the state, all our six and crew in the masjid, the school and home. So these three ancient were part of their life. So Sahulin 
Allah prepare him to be shaheed. Subhanallah. It's become the, the ultimate prize for me and my dearest wife, uh, because we promote Islamic education very heavily. At the end, by the year of my retirement, our son earned shaheed from Allah. So we have to look at Saladin's death as a very positive, that this the reward that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave me uh, is uh, the, the son that became shaheed and our son become hafid, so on, so for answered Muslim and non-Muslim, not yet Muslim in America. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create every child in the state of Fitra with three important components. The bottom left is a body with a Muslim or not yet Muslim. Allah create body with food, nurtured by food, air, and drink. In Islamic home, everything sabiha or halal. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala create a child with mind. That's why Islamic education is so important because nurture the mind through Allah, through Islam, by exemplified by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My is so important for the child growing up to be the, the best servant of Allah in order to do ibadah and da'wah. Lastly, the hearts, qalb. Rabbana la tuzi' qulubana ba'da ishadaitana Wahab lana min ladun ka rahma inna ka antan wahab. Make sure that the heart has the iman in Allah. Uh, Rukul iman, six, six of them. So through Islamic school, Islamic environment, Islamization process, Salahuddin will grow up to be the best servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best member of the society and be productive citizen of each land that he leave. So let's lead to the goal of Islamic education. Two major roles of a Muslim child. We talk about at home, early childhood, and uh, school, and the masjid. The role number one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the Asian human being, wa ma kalaktul jinna wal insa illa liya'budun. Our role is to worship Allah. Our duty is to worship Allah. Our function is to worship Allah. But the Ummah of Rasulullah different from the previous Ummah. The Ummah before, the one who make da'wah is uh, the Ambiya or Rasul. The member, you, they, just do, they just did ibadah. But the Ummah of Rasulullah because Khatam and Nabiyin, there will be no prophets come after this, become very crucial for the mother and father, uh, principal, the teacher of Islamic school, and the imam of the masjid, and a Muslim in the community to make sure that each child know their role beside ibadah. That is da'wah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala command. وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ كَوْلَمْ مِمَّنْ دَعَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So we have to Da'a ilallah, call mankind taught Allah. So I explained the concept of ID to paradise, ibadah and da'wah to thousands of the children in the United States by saying, ibadah is for you to worship Allah. Da'wah is to call mankind to do number one, to worship Allah. We call it da'wah, inviting humanity to worship Allah, because Allah created everyone to worship Him, but because freedom He gave humanity, every human being to believe or not to believe, the consequence will be different. Whoever believe, do da'wah, do ibadah and da'wah, the consequence is Jannah, Rahmah, then Jannah. For those who disobey Allah, deny to worship Allah, of course, the consequence will be Allah no best. Khalidina fiha abada. In this case is Jahannam.
So with this, so Islamic education is the right of every child. Sin, Allah is the creator and the Lord of mankind. Since Al-Quran is the guidance for mankind. Since Islam is the way of life for mankind. Since Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the mercy for mankind. Rahmatan lil alamin. Therefore, Islamic, yeah. education, Islamic education is the right of every child. That's why uh, I was involved many schools in the United States, but directly govern, run the school, seven school. Every school that I was al mudir there, there was there were people, the children or teachers or the parents except Islam. Because we opened the door for them to enroll in our Islamic school and then explain to them that they will be learning all these subjects. And of course, they love so much is Islamic value. The respect, the honor, the love and care that Muslim teachers give to their child. And the uniform work in, in favor of the not yet Muslim girls. They wear hijab. They said, oh, that's look nice. So humble. My daughter's, uh, very, very, um, very modest. Because of that, Absorb every day she became Muslim, the parent also became Muslim. So the right of Islamic education are two. This is sometimes very hard to for the teachers or the school personnel, include the principal who not familiarized with the Islamization, is very hard to accept. But I have to share this uh, to everyone. The right al haq the right of Allah, number one, very important. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had the right to be worshipped, to be praised, to be glorified, to be thanked, to be loved, to be remembered, or so on and so forth. That's why when Allah said to Rasulullah in kuntum Say, O Muhammad, if you love Allah, then I, I told the student, you have to love Allah first. If you love Allah, follow Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, follow me, and Allah will love you. SubhanAllah, beautiful ayah. And Allah will forgive you your sin. Allah is the most forgiving, the most merciful. The second rise, because of the time, uh, that uh, Dr. Jamin, Dato Jamin gave me is an hour, but since I enter late, please allow me a few minutes more. The right of student, subhanAllah, so important that that's why I, myself and all the staff and teacher in the school have to greet the student with love and care. I told them each time you see the child walk into the school, into the classroom, that child being sent by Allah to be loved, to be taught. That's why the right of student. The student have the right to be taught, to worship Allah, to praise Allah, Alhamdulillah, to glorify Allah, SubhanAllah, to be thankful to Allah, Shukrullah, to love Allah, to remember Allah, make Allah of zikrullah, and to know about whatever Allah creates and take care of environment and everything uh, in the world. This is the one that a um, little bit hard to swallow sometimes. 
any teachers in Islamic school who failed to fulfill these two rights had done an injustice to Allah. Hukukullah is the right of Allah. And hukukul ibad, the right of his servant, his slave. And in this case, a student. Uh, if I pause right here, uh, hukukullah, during the court case of murder of our son, when when we enter the courtroom, our sons and I, we have intention that uh, we will do we will do two things: fulfill the right of Allah, hukukullah, and fulfill the right hukukul ibad to Salahuddin because he was murdered unjustly, unjustly and to fulfill the rights to the one who murdered him because we have to respect him and his human being who being misguided by the shaitan and also to the judge and to the lawyers and audience in the courtroom they need to know about islam through us so alhamdulillah uh, we did all that by the help of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala very important alhamdulillah to fulfill the right of allah and the right of children so alhamdulillah has come to the conclusion what is in your mind Raditu billahi rabba wa bil islami dina wa bi muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa salla nabiyyahu wa rasoola Allahumma salli ala muhammad subhanaka allahumma wa bihamdika ashadu wa la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilai Assalamualaikum Wa alaikum salam.